He's been accused of being a lightweight politician with no policy ideas. But last Wednesday, Justin Trudeau dropped a bombshell, dumping the entire Liberal Senate caucus, but then the confusion. Are the ousted Liberal senators still considered Liberals? And if so, what has really changed in the Senate? Joining me now, James Cowan. You were the former Liberal leader in the Senate. You are now, I think, the Senate Liberal caucus leader, or what are you? I'm the leader of the opposition in the Senate, and I'm the leader of the Senate Liberal Caucus. So you're a Liberal? I am, absolutely. And Mr. Trudeau is a Liberal? Absolutely. So. And I support Mr. Trudeau. So, and you will not do anything to damage Mr. Trudeau? Absolutely. I'm going to work as hard as I can to make sure that he's the next Prime Minister. So I don't really get this thing, then, how he's throwing you off if he's... No. I, you support him, you want to do everything he wants, so sure. where's the... It's well, a bit confusing, you must let me, admit. Let me explain. Yeah. Uh, what Mr. Trudeau has decided, and I support the decision, is that Liberal Senators or Senators will no longer be part of the National Caucus of the Liberal Party of Canada. That caucus consists, will consist entirely of elected members of Parliament, and the Senate Senators will be completely independent as the Senate should be. The Senate is, a, is an independent body in Parliament and it should act more independently and Senators should act more independently. But he, never, he didn't tell you about it. He didn't tell any of your Senate colleagues about it. In fact, he didn't even tell, any, he didn't even tell the, the elected MPs in his caucus about it. This was the decision by Justin Trudeau and a group of 12 unelected officials. That cut rub some of your colleagues the wrong way. Well, I, I, I mean, I think it was a bold uh, initiative, and I think, yeah, I think the element of surprise is important, and I think that he made, mm -hmm. told everybody at the same time, and I think that was fair. That's sort of the way uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper acts, though, right? Right in with well, this little group of I, uh, clique people? I certainly wouldn't want to tar Mr. Trudeau with, by associating with Mr. Harper. I think they're very different individuals. Yeah, but you, you admit some of your colleagues were not happy. I well, I, we, I th we, we were surprised, uh, obviously. We, we weren't aware of it uh, before uh, he told us of the decision. And there's some surprise and some confusion when something like that happens. But uh, I can tell you now that uh, we've had two very uh, good uh, sessions of our colleagues, and we've all agreed amongst ourselves to hang together. We agreed that we would be uh, style ourselves as liberal senators that we would be the senate liberal caucus and that we and and they affirmed my leadership as the leader of our caucus so but, we we're very content but this uh, uh, looming auditor general's report must be pretty bad if justin trudeau is going to dump the whole 32 liberal senators he must be worried there's some real dirt on some of you guys well you may know more about what the auditor general is doing than i have but i have no reason to believe that uh, that the two are connected in any way. Well, one of your liberal senators says that um, some of the senators, senators, liberal senators, well, not guess you're not liberal senators anymore. Liberal Senate caucus members' money used to go to the uh, went to the liberal um, uh, research bureau. Is this true? No, let me explain. That, that's an it. No, abuse no, of money, we, right? No, it's not at all. Absolutely not. There's nothing. There's no abuse, uh, no impropriety at all. What uh, until. Uh, the announcement, uh, this, uh, the members of the House of Commons and the Senate, uh, Liberals in the Senate were members of the same caucus. We obviously shared research, we shared uh, materials. I, for instance, I, I can uh, give you an example in my case. Uh, I had in my office prepared a, uh, uh, an analysis of the briefs by, filed by all the provinces in the Senate reference. I had that document, I shared it with the leader of the party and with my colleagues in the House of Commons. That's a, you, you know, Senate resources were used to prepare that. I took that document and I shared it with my colleagues. There's nothing improper about that whatsoever. All right. Um, now, did you undercut um, Justin Trudeau by naming yourself the Senate Liberal Caucus? Because his people, part of the group that made this decision, weren't happy that you kept the name Liberal. Well, I don't know who you were talking to yeah. or, uh, or whether they may have been uh, happy or unhappy. I. Uh, you know, he said that we were independent, we were free to act in accordance with our own views. Under our Senate rules, we have to designate ourselves in some way. We were, had been designated as liberals, and we talked about this at some length and felt, well, we're liberals, we're proud liberals, we want to remain uh, active members of the Liberal Party, and we said we are Senate, we are liberals, and that's what we're going to remain. But, but that's the head scratcher here. What's different, other than the fact you're not sitting in a caucus well, for one day? I think what's different is that I think Mr. Trudeau has sent a very strong signal that the that the Senate 
has to, to affirm the independence of the Senate and to, to, uh, to, to show that senators have to act independently. And I think the real cause for this, Bob, if you think back to the, the fuss we had last fall with the suspensions of the, the three former conservative senators and the Prime Minister of Canada, Mr. Harper, is up on his hind legs in front of the podium at the National Convention of the Conservative Party dictating to conservative senators what they do, when they're going to do it, and how they're going to do it. That is that to me was a flagrant interference with the independence of, of, of the Senate. That's never happened to me in my experience as a senator or, or since I've become a uh, leader of, of, of the Senate Liberals. And, but I think Mr. Trudeau was trying to send, and I think he did send, a very strong signal that as far as we're concerned, the Senate is an independent body and senators are free to act without the constraints of, of, of being involved in, in, in the federal caucus. Well, we, of course, in the media will uh, keep our eyes on to make sure that Mr. Trudeau isn't dictating anything to you guys secretly or on. Uh, in any case, thank you very much, I, Mr. Uh, Cowan. I, 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 I can't believe that you'd say that. <laughs> there be, there be no, there's no indication that's happened in the past. It certainly won't happen in the future. All right. Thank you very much. Well, the Conservatives call Trudeau's Senate reform just smoke and mirrors. And the Prime Minister poked fun at the plan in the House of Commons last week. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I gather the change announced by the uh, leader today is that unelected Liberal senators will become unelected senators who happen to be Liberal. <laughs> For more on the government's reaction to the Liberal Senate blow-up, joining me now, Minister of Democratic Reform, Pierre Polyev. So, Mr. Polyev, you've heard the Prime Minister laughing this off as a... Justin Trudeau's initiative as sort of a political stunt. But there are some people that say it's a, it's, it is a bold attempt to depoliticize and make the Senate less partisan. Well, uh, I'm not sure exactly what has been announced here. Uh, if you boil it down, uh, Mr. Trudeau has transformed the Liberal Senate caucus into the Senate Liberal office and asked his senators to skip one meeting a week. But other than that, everything's the same. So I, could, I guess you could say that he's boldly transformed tomatoes into tomatoes. Um, but beyond that, I don't see much substance to uh, what occurred on this week. Well, but people are saying that, you know, uh, he's distanced himself from a disgraced institute, institution by severing his contacts with them, and that um, you guys have still got this whole group of senators there, and, and you even yourself said... It could have something to do with the Auditor General's report, which is coming down. Well, the, uh, Mr. Trudeau voted against having senators removed from caucus just a few months ago. Then, a couple of days after Post Media reported that the Auditor General's findings would soon come out, he announced that he didn't want them to attend meetings with him. So it could be a smokescreen. But on the broader question of depoliticizing the Senate, um, look, the Senate is a legislative body. It's composed, by definition, of politicians. So I'm not sure where we're going to find these apolitical politicians to do apolitical work in a political institution. Um, the solution is not to have a Senate of elites who are accountable to no one. The solution is to transform the Senate into a democratic and elected body accountable to Canadians. But even people like the Canada West Foundation has said that Trudeau's proposal is some ways a lot better than what you guys have been trying to do uh, because with having a, some kind of an elected Senate doesn't deal with the whole issue of uh, the lack of representation in Western Canada in the Senate. I mean, look at BC. They've got five senators and PEI's got four. I mean, three million population to 100,000 makes no sense. You're right. You're, you're right that there is a regional imbalance in the Senate numbers right now, but giving the appointment power over to a, an expert panel or something like that will not change the seat distribution in the Senate. What it will do, rather, is uh, you will continue to have unelected senators, but now the people who choose those senators will also be unelected. So it would be two steps from democracy rather than just one. Also, future prime ministers would have the ability to, whenever the Senate misbehaves or makes decisions that are reprehensible to Canadians, future Prime Ministers would be able to just say, look, not my problem, not my fault, this decision was made by this expert panel. So um, it's a new kind of Triple E Senate, by the elites, of the elites, and for the elites. It is even worse than the status quo. That's why we've gone to the Supreme Court, 
We're seeking the legal mandate to allow Canadians to select their senators through an elective process. Okay, but how do you counter him? Because he's getting lots of great press on this. People are saying such a great, bold move on his behalf. Uh, and he's distanced himself from you guys and the NDP, which won't abolish. He won't have some kind of elected Senate if you can ever get that. And he's saying you can't, there's no way you're going to be able to reopen the Constitution. So this is the best that we can do given the circumstances. Well, I think the best we can do given the circumstances is what we've already done in the province of Alberta where the government in that province held elections and then Prime Minister Harper respected the outcome of those elections by putting the winners in the upper chamber. He's done that uh, four or five times now. We still have three senators in the upper chamber who were democratically elected by the people of Alberta. We want to take that prototype national so that every Canadian has a chance to vote for who their future senators are and we're asking the Supreme Court for a legal instruction manual on how to do that. Mr. Bollier, thank you very much. Good to be with you, Bob.